In the last video, we covered the creation of bullet charts and trend charts for comparison. In this video, we'll be putting the dashboard together and learning our way around the dashboard layout process. To begin, we'll start where we left off on the dashboard with our text elements. We already resized the dashboard to exactly what would fit for the purposes of the screencast, but when choosing a dashboard size, I've had the best results by first figuring out what types of devices the dashboard will be regularly viewed on and build it to fit with the smallest dimensions in mind. If your users won't be trying to view it on iPad, laptops and projectors tend to have the next smallest sizing constraints. So far, we've inserted these objects as floating, but we can also use a tiled layout structure or both. We can also use these horizontal and vertical containers to help us keep floating objects grouped together and organized. Containers essentially create groups of objects and make it easy to adjust the size and placement of the group together. Let's do that now for our two text elements and their labels. Drag a vertical object onto the dashboard, and before we release the mouse button, hold the shift key. This toggles the tiled versus floating placement. We can always change it later, but let's drop it in the way we want it, floating. If you'd like to change the default, make your choice under the Add New Sheets and Objects as tiled or floating. You can always make an exception by holding Shift before you let go of the mouse button. Now let's divide the new vertical container with two horizontal containers, one for each row. That will let us line up the label to the right of the number. So drag out the horizontal container and drop it into the vertical container. Now drag out a second horizontal container into the top or bottom of the vertical container. Now we can use the layout tree to see and select the different elements we have on the dashboard, like these two horizontal containers inside the vertical container. Let's click on the sales number, grab the handle, and we'll hold shift to place it into the top tiled vertical container. Then let's grab the label and drop it, holding shift, to the right of that. We can adjust the size between these two by dragging in between them. Now let's drag the percentage into the box as well, holding the shift key. And we'll drag the label in as well next to it, also holding the shift key. The easiest way to line these two up is to select from the vertical container and drag it over to the arrow, which indicates the space between the other objects. Now let's shrink the entire vertical container, make it a little bit bigger, and now we have a layout group that we can drag around together. Now our numbers are currently stuck in the top left of the, each view, but we can fix that by fitting the contents to the entire frame. So go up here to where it says Normal and choose Entire View. Do the same for the percentage, and let's adjust the vertical spacing. That's looking good. So it's time to insert the two charts we made earlier. We're going to insert them as tiled elements, so start by dragging the bar chart out first. Since there are no other tiled elements, only floating elements, the sheet takes up the entire dashboard. Let's drag the line chart out to the left of it. You can see the helpful hints by Tableau as to where it's going to place these when you release the mouse button. Let's keep it on the left half of the screen here. And now we'll need to create some space at the top to push the sales trend down. Let's just drag out a blank object to the top half of this quadrant. Let's go ahead and close our legends. Tableau is warning us that it's going to get rid of the three items inside by closing the entire container. That's what we want to do. We can go ahead and click Delete. Let's select the bar chart and set that to take up the entire view so it stretches top to bottom and left to right. We can also hide one of these axes labels in order to space this out a little bit. Right click on it and uncheck Show Header. We could probably afford to give it a little more breathing room. So let's shrink up the bar chart a bit. And let's also give the labels here a little bit more room as well. There, that's looking good. So now we have a sharp looking, functional, strategic dashboard. 
That wraps up this dashboard project. A few key highlights from this section. Before you try to get your dashboard looking perfect, make sure you know what devices it will be viewed on and build it to fit the smallest dimensions. If you're publishing to Tableau Server, using a fixed dashboard size can improve render time since it can cache the images that it draws for the dashboard instead of redrawing them for each user. Horizontal and vertical containers can help you align, group, and arrange elements on your dashboard, but floating elements give you pixel-perfect control. And finally, you can control each object's fit to its frame using the drop-down menu. In the next section, we'll walk through the creation of a tactical dashboard for managing progress towards goals.